Well, you guys got another video here for you on how to test a new motherboard now before you go putting your uh, build together and putting the motherboard into the case you want to make sure that everything is working okay and this is going to save you a lot of headaches if you get a doa uh, motherboard so you can see here we've got our motherboard here so to set this up we need to plug in our power supply into the wall and then plug in the CPU cable into the motherboard. Then we need to plug in our 24 pin uh, PSU connector into the motherboard and the power supply and then insert the graphics card into the actual motherboard itself. Now if you're using an APU you won't need a, a GPU but in this case we haven't got a, a graphics card because we've got an APU processor and all we need to do here is do exactly what I just showed you there and empower this up and we should be able to test it and see if we get display. So let's go ahead and uh, get all this prepped up ready to test. So we need our cables and our power supply. So I'm just going to get the power supply here and we can put it onto the bench here. So we're just using the build power supply here. This could be any power supply as long as you've got a good known working power supply. That's all you're going to need to test this motherboard. So let's get it all out of the box and get it all onto the uh, bench here and test. So why do we need to test the motherboard uh, before we build our computer? And the simple reason being is depending on how complex your build is will determine how much work and effort you put into building a computer. So for instance, if you go ahead and do a hardline wall cord system where you've just basically built your whole PC and you go to switch it on it doesn't work means you're going to have to dismantle it all to send that motherboard back. Now it's much more easier to test the motherboard this way because what we're going to do is get our power supply out we need to get this out anyway during the build process and we can then plug in our 24 pin connector into the board like so get this plugged into the board now you'll notice I've already got the RAM inserted into the board I've also got the CPU in the socket and the cooler already on there. After I've done the 24 pin connector, I can put in the CPU connector into the board here. And if you haven't got an APU processor like this one, then you will need to plug in your GPU, which is your graphics card into the motherboard. In this case, we don't have to worry about it because we've got an APU which has built in graphics. So once you've got all this done, move all the cables out of the way here all we need to do once we've got this done is to uh, put the power cable to the wall outlet and then get an HDMI cable from the monitor which we've already got plugged in and we're going to plug in the HDMI cable into the uh, GPU part now if you've got a GPU then plug it into the GPU but in my case we've got an APU here which has onboard graphics so I can just plug in the HDMI cable into the required slot in the back and there we go so now we've got all the cables plugged in what I'm going to do now is put the power to the power supply to the wall outlet I've already got the monitor plugged in and turned on ready to go and then we can get our power switch put into the motherboard now you may be saying to yourself that you could skip this step and just get on board and that is correct you can do that and you don't have to worry about it but the problem is if you've done all cable management and also maybe you've got some sort of wall cord system the last thing you're going to want to do is have to dismantle the whole thing uh, to get the motherboard back out to get it sent off it's a complete nightmare and uh, it's happened to me and uh, because you skip this process it's so much more easier to just do this process it takes literally five minutes and then you can get on with the build so let's go ahead and uh, get the power into the power supply the power supply so I'm just going to get my kettle lead or power cable as you may call them. It's just plug it into the back of the power supply here and switch that on and have that ready to go. Now it won't boot up automatically. What you're going to need to do is a jump of these pins here. These are the power on switch. Now you can either use a screwdriver or you can use a tiny little cable with a micro switch on it, which is much more professional and easier to control as you can see here. So this is a cable, you can get these on Amazon, very cheap and affordable. You can just plug this into the correct jumpers onto the board. This will go onto the power switch jumper. So I'm just gonna get those onto there, which I've done. 
and now we've got a little micro switch on the end here which will act as our power on switch which you would have basically on your case so I'm just going to turn the switch now on the power supply and you should now see lights flicker on and you should now see that we do have the RGB on the RAM showing up here and that's because we've got power going to the board which is a good sign and what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to push the micro switch here to turn on the unit itself and hopefully we will get display on our monitor so that's what we're going to do next so just power on this and it should power on so we've got power going through it's a good sign got the CPU fan going on there we also got the fan spinning on the power supply and I can already see the display on the monitor screen there so let's go ahead and quickly just turn the angle on the camera here so you can see the actual display come up on the monitor so you should get a post on the monitor screen here so let me just uh, turn the tripod round so you can see the monitor and you should see a post screen there which is your post and then we can get into the BIOS here so if you've got a keyboard and mouse you will be able to control uh, that if you want to do that if you want to go into the BIOS you can do I've got a little re remote keyboard here which I'll use so if you don't have one of these little small uh, keyboards here you will need to use a proper keyboard and mouse if you want to go into uh, the BIOS here like I'm doing here you can see now I'm in the BIOS so everything is working just fine so what we can do now is we can now switch this off and go ahead and carry on with the build process so you could literally if you wanted to you could flash the BIOS if you wanted to at this stage uh, before you built your PC but I'm going to leave this as it is and I'm going to just power this all off and continue with the build process so I'm just going to power this off with the micro switch here just to hold this down and this will turn it off now you can just switch the power supply unit off if you want to but with the micro switch there you just hold this and it turns it all off nice and simple now all I need to do now is just remove the micro switch from the board and then I can remove the HDMI cable so I'm just going to do that now just remove this and then I can start to remove the other cables which is the CPU connector and also the 24 pin so once I remove those I'll be able to then just put the motherboard into the case it's a pretty tight fit this one I'm just going to remove that and remove this one here and now we're ready to insert the motherboard into the case and carry on with the build anyway that's going to be about it for this video that's basically how you can test your brand new uh, motherboard uh, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos <laughs>